I have been waiting a long time to build this. All right, before I start talking, I'm gonna put this little time code up here if you wanna go ahead and skip to where I start building and not hear me ramble so much. Okay, now that those people are gone, I'm gonna go ahead and explain about what is going on with this build. Originally, I wanted to have a Windows 98 machine, and the previous build I did, where it was a giant mess, didn't really turn out the way that I hoped it would go for, and that machine turned into a Windows ME anyway, so I was looking for a more suitable and more time appropriate for this kind of build, and I decided to do a little bit of research. Now, I am aware there are tons of videos, especially the really popular ones, with someone doing a brand new build of Windows 98, and of course, some of the really popular other YouTube channels that have built their monster Windows 98 machine. Well, as much as I would really love to jump the gun in terms of going all crazy like that, like putting a one gigahertz, like Pentium 3 or like 512 megabytes of RAM, while I consider that being overkill and the greatest thing too, I want again to be more time period. So. I went to do some research and I think I found exactly what it is that I am looking for that would actually make this build a lot more fun. Computer Gaming World Magazine, December issue of 1999, the killer rigs. That's right. Now, the specs on this looked very interesting and I definitely wanted to do something like this. So I went out and grabbed some parts and I didn't quite grab everything that's on the list there are some that don't exist or just some that is way too expensive out of my budget and rather get something that's kind of equivalent or a little bit better of that one part but otherwise after a long long time of gathering these parts i was able to get everything ready everything tested and we are good so we're going to go ahead and jump onto this build because I'm really excited for this. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just make sure all these wires are out of the way. Make sure the motherboard standoffs inside the computer case are all there. They appear to be and everything looks fine. So we'll go ahead and break out the motherboard. This is the Asus P3B F model with the six PCI slots as described in the article. And we'll go ahead and lay this on top of the styrofoam covered in tape logging package that actually came with the motherboard. That was interesting when I got that. And of course I got some RAM here. So these are four 64 megabytes of of RAM which is equivalent to 256 megabytes of PC133s and of course we're gonna break out the Pentium 3 this is actually the 650 megahertz um, it was just the only thing that I could find at the time and was pretty cheap on the market for my budget but I can always underclock it to be 600 so we should be okay I'm gonna go ahead and put this in make sure that thing is secured and we are good and I'll just go ahead and put the dials in to set it to 600 megahertz and we should be fine and of course we got here the Nvidia TNT 2 graphics card which is an AGP so we'll go ahead and put that in the slot make sure that is secured we'll move the motherboard a little bit out of the way so it can actually fit in there just fine and we'll go ahead and set up a little testing area I got the power supply in and we'll just plug it in and turn it on so let's go ahead and take a look any second now any moment uh excuse me okay let me kind of explain so the motherboard I have is a reversion 1.03 and it does not take that Pentium 650 at all. And it doesn't take specific Pentium 600s either. I am aware there's like a 600B and I don't remember what the other one is. So I had to order what was available at the time, a Pentium 550, which is fine. 
And for the meantime, I stuck a Pentium to 450 megahertz in there. So we'll just roll with that. And then later down the road, when that part comes in, I'll go ahead and update that. And everything should be good. So let's just go ahead and continue with the build. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put the motherboard in the computer case here. And we're just going to go ahead and tighten the screws on there so it sits there just fine. And we're just putting in the NVIDIA card in there. And we're just going to put some new screws in there as well. Make sure we get this tightened. And I have here a PCI a blower, basically. It's just a fan um, that's going to be underneath one of our other video cards we're putting in, which is the wonderful 3DFX Voodoo 2 1000. That's right, and this is only the 8 megabyte version of it, which is totally fine. It didn't really give a description on which version it is, so I'm assuming it's going to be the 8 megabyte one. All right, what I have here is a SCSI disk controller by Adaptic. Hopefully I'm pronouncing this correctly. And this is going to be for the SCSI hard drive that we have here, which I will show eventually. Now I want to make one quick note. The only reason why I chose the Audigy was because I need something to compete with the uh, Turtle Beach sound card. And the one that I have, I know for a fact won't work. So I had problems with it and this wasn't really time period correct. So I had to switch it out with a Sound Blaster Live after the build. Now that I know, I'm never going to take this thing on the internet, but it was part of the specs for the machine. So here is the 3Com PCI card, and really the sole purpose of it is just for decor and to look pretty. Alrighty, now we can pull out the hard drive, which this is a Quantum Atlas 10K. This is a 9.2 gigabyte hard drive. And with something that is this old and heats up very fast, we're going to need something to cool it off. So I have here a brand new hard drive little cooling rack on there. So it's got two fans on it. And this will just keep it cool so this thing doesn't... Well, I don't know if it's ever blown up before or if there has been any reports of SCSI drives blown up. But there has been um, reports of it just overheating and cracking, as from what I'm told. So make sure I don't want this to happen in my machine. And we're just going to go ahead and screw that in and pop it in the machine. At first, when I was trying to put this thing in there, it was kind of awkward and a little bit difficult, but I was able to manage to get it in there correctly. So yeah, that was something I just wanted to add. That was kind of weird. Now we're gonna put in the power supply here and it's pretty new, it's a 450 and I know that the description wanted a 300 watt. However, I'm still a little uncomfortable using used power supplies and I didn't really find a new one that was 300 watts. And we'll just go ahead and insert just this generic floppy disk. It's nothing too special. Now, I'm actually really excited to own this. This is a slot drive DVD by Pioneer. This is a 6X. Again, I've never owned one of these before, and I'm just really excited to get this thing hooked up.
Now this is something that I've also never messed with either. This is a internal 250 zip drive. I couldn't find a two gigabyte one. And to be honest, I don't think I really wanted it either just because of the fact that I've heard really bad reviews about it. So I figured that might as well get something that's actually going to work. Well, now we're at the part where we just have to hook everything up. So here we go, all this really fun stuff right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and kinda skip this part just so, because it's a lot of footage and I don't think we're gonna wanna sit here and watch all this. So we're just gonna go ahead and just skip right to where it's all done. And at the end of it all, we have here a really beautiful machine here. I mean, this thing just looks sick. And of course, we got some case badges to put on it. So let's go ahead and start sticking them on. Now, I got these wonderful case badges from Geek and Spiel, which they are just looking absolutely beautiful. And I definitely, if you want to get some case badges, go to this guy. I'm telling you, go to this guy right now. And the first case badge I got from him was <laughs> UAC case badge, the Union Aerospace Corporation from Doom and Doom 2. I mean, come on. Of course I'm going to get it. Of course I'm going to put it on my computer. It would be silly if I didn't. And of course we're going to need one of these Windows 98 case badges as well because this was designed for it. It was intended for Windows 98. And we're going to stick one of these custom Voodoo 3D effects case badge stickers on it because we just got to. We just have to. I mean, we got to let everyone know there is a 3D effects Voodoo card in it. And of course, we're putting in the Sound Blaster case badge on it because, well, why not? We do have a Sound Blaster in it. Okay, I got to have this sticker on my case. If anyone remembers this, I mean, this is just too funny to have. Remember to turn off your computer before midnight of December 31st of 1999 from Best Buy. And of course, at the same time, the computer is Y2K bug free. I mean, even the fact that that was a thing is just too funny to go back and look at. Okay, with everything hooked up, this is what I'm going to call it a fire test to see if I actually plugged in everything right. If not, it'll blow up. And so far, it looks like I did plug everything in right. Are we going to get picture? Oh, yes we do. Perfect. Everything works. No problem whatsoever. Thank God. Okay, so I'm just in the BIOS right now. I'm just making sure everything looks fine and making a couple of changes to the boot so we can boot off the CD-ROM and the floppy so we can go ahead and install Windows 98 on this machine. All right, now with the TED-K Atlas being detected, what I'm doing right now is I'm going ahead and configuring it and making sure we get this thing formatted and it's ready to go uh, before we start installing the operating system. I want to make sure that uh, it was detected and it was set correctly so that the machine can detect where the hard drive is located. All right, we're finally at the part where we're installing the Windows 98 machine and I'm also putting in a boot disk just in case, but otherwise it wants us to format it again, which is okay, even though I did, but I think it's specific to what Windows need. But otherwise, we'll just wait for this to get done and we'll jump into the setup. All right, so everything is done. We're just doing a quick scan disk and we're jumping into setup. Now here, I'm a little shocked that it takes a very long time. I mean, the footage is basically sped up. And this thing is going as fast as possible. But as you can see, it's like kind of stuck, but it's like moving at the same time. Yeah, so I'm, I had to wait a while for this thing to get done. The first time hearing it was much louder and it was going, like it was clicking for a very long time. I literally thought this thing died, 
but no, that's just how it sounds. It's a working, healthy hard drive, and wow, very nostalgic at the same time. And honestly, just for laughs and giggles, I set the date to December of 1999 on the 26th. Yeah, basically, it's the day after Christmas when we started building this computer. And here we are. That's right. So, I got a CD here that contains all the drivers. So, we're going to go ahead and get those installed. And we'll probably add some additional programs as well. Now, during this process, I think I've mentioned this before, I had a little bit of issues with the sound card, but I actually had issues with the NVIDIA card, and I thought that thing stopped working. But it turns out that the driver I had, for whatever reason, could not detect the TNT2, so I had to go back on the web, find the actual drivers or the actual system files to put in the Windows 32 driver folder and get this thing working because otherwise the last one I tried I thought it worked but it didn't and that's the same with the uh, Sound Blaster Audigy that one was giving me problems too which again I not sure why I chose that card should have stuck with the Sound Blaster Live, but I already told you guys about that. So moving forward, I did finally get the sound card to work and the video card to work, and everything else worked fine. Um, uh, maybe minor issues with the 3Com, but otherwise, um, everything worked fine. But we're not done just yet. We still have a unboxing to do, and this is the Cambridge Soundworks PC speakers. Yes, this thing is brand new. And I literally picked this up on offer up for five bucks. Listen, guys, if you are looking for old hardware, go to more places besides eBay. Check offer up, check Craigslist. Sometimes Craigslist has it, but I kind of find little luck with it. But offer up, you'd be kind of surprised. So let us just dive in and let's get this thing unboxed. Let's see what we got. So first thing we're presented is the installation and operating instructions. Yeah, and quite an interesting design for where you want to put the speakers at. And we got our product registration. Never been filled out. We're going to keep it that way. And oh man, look at that. Still wrapped. That is just a beautiful sight. I mean, I am so surprised for where this thing came from, for how much I paid for it. It's just amazing. And everything else is still wrapped in there too. Nothing has been breached. So let's go ahead and pull everything out. So we have the power supply here. Oh, I hate these stupid bricks, but whatever. Let's go ahead and just set that aside. And this must be the... Uh, wall mounts, which I ain't gonna mess with that. We ain't mounting that on any walls. And these individual little speakers that are just nicely packaged. That is just amazing. I love this. I think I've actually owned this at one point, or it could have been like a newer model of it. So, yep, here I am just going opening everything. We're gonna go ahead and get this all set up as well. And we'll get it hooked up and I'll definitely have it to where I'm in a little bit of a quiet environment. And together we will hear this together and just hear how amazing this thing sound. Perfect. Works just fine. And wow, that thing packs a punch. 
for base. Okay, I know this video has been really long, but we're still not done yet. So if you need to take a bathroom break or get a drink, I would probably do that right now. Okay, welcome back. Anyways, I won't be doing a part two of this. We're just going to do it in one big video. But we have some peripherals to install and we have some games to play as well. So let's go ahead and get started with that. First up, we are installing the Gravis for the GamePro USB joystick. Okay, perfect. So we'll just go ahead and install. Uh, oh, you selected a Gravis controller. Wise choice. I will guide you in installing it. Okay, the installation talks to me. Great. Proceed with due caution. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and just go forward with this. Congratulations. Your software installation is now complete. Okay, the next part is the Sidewinder Precision 2 USB. Now I know previously it showed the Sidewinder force feedback, but I forgot that the Sound Blaster Audigy does not have a game port and nor does the motherboard, so yeah, that kind of sucks. But hey, we still got something that is still better and is USB, which makes life a lot more easier. Okay, and actually one last thing to do. I want to be able to customize my wallpaper and a couple of settings on here. And we'll go ahead and jump into gaming afterwards. Beautiful. And if you guys are wondering about the wallpaper, that is actually taken from Star Siege Tribes, the Diamond Sword faction, which they are the sickest looking faction ever. Okay, and then with the color correction settings, this is just what I normally would have it. Um, but otherwise, we'll go ahead and jump into the first game. And that first game used to scare me as a child, which is called Alien vs. Predator Gold. <laughs> Greetings, stranger. I'm not surprised to see your kind here. Many adventurers have traveled this way since the recent troubles began. No doubt you've heard about the tragedy that befell the town of Tristram. Some say that Diablo, the Lord of Terror, walks the world again. I don't know if I believe that.
well. All the games seem to work just fine, except for maybe one or two that were kind of having a bit of an issue. But nonetheless, this machine really does prove to be its power rig. Now, we're going to jump into just a couple more games. And these ones are mostly for what you would see on the PlayStation, like the console type of games. Go ahead and check it out. Observatory, take him out. Crowd control situation. Yep, and those games actually are a lot more better on the PC instead of the PlayStation, but, you know, that's totally fine. I could play it on both. Well, we made it, guys. This was all the games that I definitely wanted to benchmark, and my end result, I am very satisfied with this project, and I am very happy with this computer. And with the other parts coming in, I am sure to do possibly a follow-up just to give everyone just an update on the rig and see if I'm going to do some cable management. But otherwise, if you guys made it this far in the video, which you guys are awesome for doing so, by the way, um, definitely subscribe to this channel if you want more content like this and give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Uh, this just really helps with feedback. I definitely personally enjoy doing these kind of videos especially just building computers and definitely look forward to possibly doing more if you guys are wanting this kind of content as well so i will see you guys on the next video